November 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Daniel chapter 1 from the Old Testament. In the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon advanced against Jerusalem and laid it under siege. Now the Lord delivered King Jehoiakim of Judah into his power, along with some of the vessels of the temple of God. He brought them to the land of Babylonia, to the temple of his God, and put the vessels in the treasury of his God. The king commanded Ashpenaz, who was in charge of his court officials, to choose some of the Israelites who were of royal and noble descent, young men in whom there was no physical defect and who were handsome, well versed in all kinds of wisdom, well educated, and having keen insight and who were capable of entering the king's royal service, and to teach them the literature and language of the Babylonians. So the king assigned them a daily ration from his royal delicacies and from the wine he himself drank. They were to be trained for the next three years. At the end of that time, they were to enter the king's service. As it turned out, among these young men were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But the overseer of the court officials renamed them. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar. Hananiah he named Shadrach. Mishael he named Meshach. And Azariah he named Abednego. But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the royal delicacies or the royal wine. He therefore asked the overseer of the court officials for permission not to defile himself. Then God made the overseer of the court official sympathetic to Daniel. But he responded to Daniel, I fear my master, the king. He is the one who has decided your food and drink. What would happen if he saw that you looked malnourished in comparison to the other young men your age? If that happened, you would endanger my life with the king. Daniel then spoke to the warden whom the overseer of the court officials had appointed over Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Please test your servants for ten days by providing us with some vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who are eating the royal delicacies. Deal with us in light of what you see. So the warden agreed to their proposal and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, their appearance was better, and their bodies were healthier than all the young men who had been eating the royal delicacies. So the warden removed the delicacies and the wine from their diet, and gave them a diet of vegetables instead. Now as for these four young men, God endowed them with knowledge and skill in all sorts of literature and wisdom, and Daniel had insight into all kinds of visions and dreams. When the time appointed by the king arrived, the overseer of the court officials brought them into Nebuchadnezzar's presence. When the king spoke with them, he did not find among the entire group anyone like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, or Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and insight the king asked them about, he found them to be ten times better than any of the magicians and astrologers that were in his entire empire. Now Daniel lived on until the first year of Cyrus the king. God, Daniel is one of my uh, top favorite books in the Bible. It's that for many, many reasons. One, it's actually two books in one. Uh, the first half of the book, we get to learn about him and his friends who he went into exile with. Uh, and then the second half is a lot of prophecy that connects directly to a lot of the things we're talking about in Revelation now over in the New Testament. So as always, your timing is perfect with uh, Daily Video Bible and matching up uh, those pieces. I also love Daniel because there's so much, especially in the first half of Daniel, there's so many pieces that we can apply directly to our life very easily, even though this happened thousands of years ago and we don't have, at least in the United States, we don't have courts and kingdoms. Uh, we don't have some of the situations that Daniel was put into, uh, definitely not dens with lions, but uh, the whole idea that we are royalty 
uh, having been put into uh, an idle situation, meaning we are your royal children. We have been put into exile basically here on earth. We don't belong here. Uh, we don't need to be assimilated to earth. We need to uh, not live of this world. Uh, and we need to remember always that we are your royal children. And Daniel did that. I also find it interesting, the connection backwards. Uh, Isaiah actually prophesied some of the pieces. There's definitely a connection with Isaiah in Daniel. Because Isaiah prophesied that... Hezekiah, when he showed off his treasures uh, to, to Babylon, hoping to gain favor in the ongoing war, uh, Isaiah said, yeah, so your treasures, including the treasures of your family, meaning the people in your family are going to be carted off by the Babylonians. And sure enough, uh, not only did you have your people put into exile, but also the royal family at least some of them went into into exile as well. And then King Nebuchadnezzar definitely <laughs> figured out really quick that he was going to add the best of the best to his court. Why would you not cherry pick uh, from all the exiles that had just arrived? So we know a little bit about Daniel and his friends. Um, they were obviously your people, God. Uh, they were young men. Uh, late teens early 20s ish uh, they were very good looking very smart um, and were of royalty uh, of the court itself then from just the first chapter of daniel we know some more things about daniel and his friends uh, we know very clearly especially with daniel that he is not going to assimilate he is going to do what is required of him to reflect your glory god um, to be a light to others in that situation but he's not going to do it at the cost of his relationship with you and so when the king tried to assimilate them and tried to give them their food and new names and the names would have gone from the name like daniel uh, which was a name having to do with you uh, they were given instead names having to do with idols. And so everything about them was almost a little bit like brainwashing. Uh, the king wanted to fully assimilate them, um, to have them be completely loyal to the royal court that they were uh, being made a part of. And Daniel said no. He said it respectfully and he knew who to say it to and how to say it. Uh, you obviously helped with that as well, God, uh, by making certain people find favor with Daniel. But he said, no, my name's Daniel. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not eating this, this food. And he didn't say it in a snotty way. He didn't say it in a condescending way. In fact, he even said it in a little bit of a psychology way to get them on their side uh, so that they could eat food uh, that was not assimilated with this new culture. They knew that this food probably had been offered first to the gods of Babylonia, to the various idols. And so they knew that they couldn't partake in food um, that had been first offered to idols. Uh, they also knew that if they partook of food and that wine, uh, that it would appear as though they were becoming part of Babylonia uh, instead of setting themselves apart which is what you call us to do to set ourselves apart from the world that we are put in and then even in this first chapter we see you give uh, power to Daniel and his friends so that they stand out and above and beyond anything that King Nebuchadnezzar had ever seen before uh, you allow your people to shine not for them but for you so that your will will be done in those situations, including with people who think that they have all the power like King Nebuchadnezzar. So we see Daniel and his friends coming into a place uh, where they're to be assimilated into this idol culture. Babylon even had named the gates around its high walls after the various idols, deities of that day. 
and they had stood their ground and in a couple years they were entered into the king's service uh, and astounded the king with their knowledge and now they had been placed by you in a perfect opportunity to have the ear of the king so sometimes we get really frustrated we think it's just me how am i going to help the world how am i going to tell people about you god and right now i feel like i can't do any of that anyways because my life is filled with sin and i keep making bad choices and if we just stop for a second and realize the position daniel and his friends were in they were in trouble with you <laughs> they were part of a group being exiled uh, they could have thought at that point that their relationship with you was done that you had washed your hands of them and were sending them off to the enemy uh, but they didn't they had faith and they believed in what you had told them so even though they were being sent into exile they were being punished along with with the other other people they were still obedient to what you asked them to do and even obedient as we'll see in in the next couple stories in the face of extreme extreme pressure including the threat of death a few times <laughs> God, we live in a world that wants us to assimilate. If we do not wear the right clothes, have the right titles, drive the right car, uh, like the right things on Facebook and other social media, share the right YouTube uh, videos, we are thought of as outcasts and we are treated as such by this world as well. To me, that is good. To a lot of people, I know that that is a struggle wanting to have one foot in this world and one foot in as a Christian. And you're very clear about that. We need to participate in the culture of this world, meaning we need to have relationships enough so that we can have conversations with people and not ostracize people. But we don't have to assimilate ourselves. Daniel and his friends show us a great example of going up against a king which is going up against way more than what we have to deal with today and saying no we aren't going to take on names of deities we aren't going to eat this food and we'll see as we continue in the stories of daniel that he becomes more and more defiant not in a disrespectful way but in a clear i want you to understand just how big my god is so God, as we walk through our day today <laughs> and the world constantly tries to assimilate us through TV and the internet and billboards and our friends and our music, gosh, standing in the checkout line at, at the grocery store, allow us to behave in a way that we can maneuver in this world, but that we are set apart the people truly see that we live our lives a different way. We think a different way. We go about things a different way. We aren't assimilated to this world. And we do that because we serve this great, big, awesome, amazing king who is bigger than all the things, all the attractive, sparkly things of this world that try to make us common like everything else here on earth. God, I do know that we are your royal children and allow our hearts and our minds to remember that as we make decisions today to do things of this world and not of this world god help us with our discernment and understanding what we need to do and what we can easily stay away from so that you are glorified thank you for the book of daniel i'm very excited to get in there and and read it and share it with everyone else uh, what an amazing young man with incredible presence of mind and all these incredible gifts that you put inside of him and he willingly shared with the king. In your son's name I pray, amen. <laughs>